lock this room. Room is locked. Look at that, twitch.tv. Uh, oh, that's what I need. I need pulse audio control, so I get my mute button. I need to buy one of those. A mute button? Yeah, or a cough button. Like a hardware one. Oh, that would be nice. I can use my $500 in uh, Stellar Lumens. You could. All right. Um, I think. Yep, we're good. Okay, 258. Okay, you ready? Yep. I can't see you. Okay. Uh, okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 258 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Hayam. Tom is somewhere, but he's there. I'm there here. Everywhere. He's on a boat in a coat with a mouse on a, on a house with a fox in a box. He will eat. He will eat those green eggs and ham. Yes, Sam, I am. I like green eggs and ham. Um, I used to remember filming TikToks. No, I, I used to memorize that for a, a, a child I was babysitting for, and I convinced her that I memorized it. <laughs> nice. Anyway, um, so yeah, so yeah, this is episode two fifty eight. We are recording Thursday, uh, January seventh, so a day after whatever you want to call that stormed at the Capitol, and we do want to say that that all those events are reprehensible and. They should be all those people should be treated to the full arm of the law, full law, full order, and none of that should happen. If you don't like something, you you call it out. You write change.org petitions. You 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 do whatever you can. But what you can do is vote. If, if you, I was going to say, if you wanted to get really serious about it, you uh, you get your keister down to the voting booth and uh, you circle the little boxes. You drop it in the ballot box and you walk away peacefully. Okay, and if you have problems with voting, you call the phone numbers on there. You don't, you don't, you don't just make baseless claims because, again, facts have said that there has been no widespread voter fraud from every single source. Eighty supreme, eighty court decisions. Uh, you had a peaceful election in Georgia the uh, the night before, and nobody complained. Both uh, parties. Uh, con- both, I guess, I think they both conceded at this point. I think yeah. they both actually. So there is uh, honor amongst politicians, whatever you want to think of politicians. But anyway, what happened yesterday or whatever on uh, Wednesday the sixth was reprehensible, and and that should never happen. Uh, and those people should be tried. Remember, it's federal, and as the president says, they should be ten years minimum for desecrating federal property because we are a law and order country. So, and this, this is not a political podcast, but the reason we're saying that is because we do have a topic today that, well, we've got several, but the first topic today, if, if we didn't say that up front, we would be grouping ourselves with a group of um, people that we don't want to be associated with. I'm, I'm trying to be very politically correct here tonight. Um, this is a PG rated podcast after all. Uh, but the one of the things we wanted to bring up tonight is uh, basic OPSEC or operational security. Um, let's say, for instance, that you're doing something that you don't necessarily want to get caught at, right? You head down to a cupcake shop when you and your spouse have decided that you're going to do a joint diet and lose weight together. But man, those cupcakes are delicious. The one thing you don't want to do is take pictures of yourself at the shop, eating at the shop, taking high res pictures of that beautiful chocolate cupcake with the sprinkles and just mm, that decorative frosting. It's perfect. And then post that all over your social media, complete with geo tags and the real name policy. So if you uh, if you are doing something that you're afraid you might get caught at or maybe maybe shouldn't be doing, uh, don't don't go tweeting it. <laughs> don't don't even take your phone into the cupcake shop, right? Your wife can hit that find my iPhone button. And uh, yeah, there you go. You're uh, I was going to give a different knows. example. I was going to give a different example. You're going to try to propose to your significant other, which There's you're probably, 
you're you're probably on Facebook, on Twitter, you're probably following the same bunch of people. They probably know all your friends and your parents and everything else. And you have to get the rig, you have to do everything right, and you have to cover your tracks where it doesn't look like you're out and about doing nefarious things. And yes. Like so, if there's if there's a jewelry store in the middle of nowhere and you have your phone and you've got like Google's like latitude activity reporting and it's it's making a map and oh why were you in the middle of nowhere or you've got like find my friends or find my iPhone turned on with that sharing enabled I, you might not want to buy a ring obviously uh during during those times right maybe maybe like find a a jewelry shop next to like a GameStop or or a cupcake shop if that's your deal, um, you know something to add some plausible deniability. But don't like take that ring and snap a photo and put it on Facebook and be like, oh look what I bought for my fiance. It's totally gonna happen tomorrow night um, because that's really bad operational security. Um, again, we uh, I, I don't want to put us in in the that group of people um the the hateful mob as as we'll call them um but i i did i did wanted to comment on a little bit of basic opsec um am i happy that these people did not have basic opsec absolutely the fbi is having a way easier time with all those selfies um but yeah just something to think about if you need to be sneaky for whatever reason which there are plenty of valid reasons to be sneaky look we we've done i, I know we've done opsec shows but before we've done full opsec shows and everything else uh we can find them for you you know what you can do and we're going to discuss this in a few minutes you can join our whatsapp group and we can give you full operational security tips and and we always talk about this right before the big major conferences where take your burner phone, format things going on planes, leaving the country, all these little different things. But one of those things that at least my teacher's union tells me is don't post on Facebook while you're supposed to be working. It's theft of time. Little things like that. Or or uh, don't pose. We're not allowed to pose with alcohol in our hand. Don't pose with alcohol in your hand. You never know who's watching or whatever it is. So... I mean, th or these are simple like, things, but to, to give another example, like if you work for a government contractor, a company that runs up to a government contractor, maybe don't post photos of yourself at like a anti NSA Snowden rally, right? Um, it maybe if you're at an anti NSA Snowden rally, don't wear your work badge, <laughs> like outside on the front of your shirt, running around complaining about the government. Um, yeah, just li little things to keep in mind. Well, let's move on to our main, our not our main, but our almost main. Apple last last week, the new, just recently, posted what what Tom likes to call nutrition facts. Uh, they're just Apple dubs them as privacy labels. So when you download the app, it says, "Hey, wait a second, this is what this app tracks of you," and and you can imagine how bad it could be, which it is. And are you sure you want to do it? And we discussed this in the WhatsApp group on how on how and we went through the different apps, how terrible some of these are, how great some of these are. And, but I think we both have the same take as it's not that great. They're not really giving you the whole picture. They're saying, yes, it can get this information, but they're not saying that everything else gives you this information or how they're using it or whatever it is. They're just saying, hey, they're getting your name. Are you OK with that? They're getting a way to send you money via text message. It's this permission thing, and we've spoken about permissions in the past. Just think of the permissions and and turn it into privacy, and, and you have the same story. Yeah, the the main the main differentiator here between the the privacy labels and uh, app permissions is that with app permissions, the developer actually has to build that into their code. They have to list up in their manifest. I want access to your camera. I want access to your location. I want access to your, your very precise location. Like if you're using Google Maps, you want to know exactly where you are. You don't want to know I'm around the Seattle area. You want to know I am right here on this street because I need to get right here on this street. Um, so getting precise location information, yeah, is a requirement. But it's built into the code. And 
if the permission is not in the manifest, and this this applies to iPhone and Android, they use different terms and there's different systems to pull this off. But basically how it works is that unless it's specified up front, this application needs access to these things, you can't use them in code. Your application will actually um, you know, throw error messages or crash or that feature just won't be available if you don't have permission to use it. Uh, if, if you've ever used an iPhone or modern Android phones, and you try to like take a picture with a messaging app, like Signal, for instance. The first time you try to take a picture with Signal on modern Android or most iPhones, it'll say, hey, can we access the camera? This is to take pictures. And it'll ask you up front, you know, you hit the camera button, it's gonna ask you then. Just makes sense. And if you say no, Signal's gonna go, cool, that's fine. You can't take a picture inside of the Signal app because you didn't give us access to your camera. That's totally fine. Um, unfortunately, the the privacy labels don't really work like that because there's no there's no code that says the company is using this piece of data in this way and they can't use it any other way, right? Because that data is outside of Apple and Google's control. It's outside of their ecosystem. So they can ask developers, how are you using this? And the developers say, we're using it for these reasons. And Apple and Google can make umpteen numbers of policies saying, if you don't follow this, we're gonna kick you off the app store. But as we've seen before, especially with the Facebook VPN controversy, sometimes companies are less than honest or ignorant about what's happening under their own roof. I mean, <clears throat> so so with the permissions, like you said, the, your your camera, you're taking the photo and it asks you for that. The next thing they're going is, hey, we're sending this data to Facebook. And, and while Apple, like you said, Apple and Android can't stop you from sending the data, they can't stop uh, Facebook from getting it. Facebook is getting it. And then the question is, are they doing the right thing with it? So I just saw this as sort of a scare tactic because we went over this. It says we're, we need, we need to know financial information. No, they're going to see who you paid through their, their, uh, their, whatever their payment app, which, which is another thing I'm now mad about. There's 13 different payment apps. And everyone thinks that theirs is better. So you're trying to give money to somebody. It's like, do you have this really obscure payment app? And by the way, Zell, I hate you. Zell, I, I can't that that's the nice way of me saying something. Zell is a dumpster fire and you should never use it. But anyway, so yes, they want that. Uh location. Well, I really like when I'm driving to share the location with somebody so somebody knows where I am. That's what I use it for. Um, it's fa fa now Facebook, I guess, can get it and they can put ads against it or whatever it is. Yes, but again, it's all, and we're going to get into this. What's your threat model? Who real? Wh what are you trying to hide from? So I don't know. Do you have anything else to add about these nutrition labels? Yeah, a little bit. So, so to give an example, um, a signal the the privacy facts, the nutrition labels. Um, it, it says that Signal doesn't do anything with your data, which I'm sure it's true today. I'm sure Signal today doesn't use your data for anything except running the Signal service, right? They're, they're not selling ads against it. They're not trying to dox you. They're, they're not selling your phone number in mass to anyone. Like, I, I get it. They, they have said this is how they're using it. But on a technical level, signal still has your phone number right they they have very like extremely small amounts of data right they've got your phone number and the last time your device talked to the signal servers that's that's really it um it, it doesn't stop signal from doing anything nefarious with your phone number right i don't think they would signals a a pretty poor example here because i do trust signal i trust moxie marlin spike and i trust open whisper systems but the fact remains that the only thing these these privacy labels or these you know privacy nutrition facts are based on is developer attestation it's the company or the developer saying i promise i'm not doing anything nefarious with this and apple has to take them at their word and if they find out to the contrary right there are going to be consequences but it's not a hard and fast system. It's basically a, please trust me, this is what I'm doing. And very little in the way of follow-up, right? If you do something nefarious and you don't get caught, who's going to find out? 
Well, the um, question I have is, what can they, what can they do with the phone number? I mean, and not not a whole lot. I mean, they could yeah. sell, they could sell ads against it. They could say that this phone number contacts people, you know, contacts these phone numbers, or, or not even that much, because Signal doesn't really have that information. They could say this phone number uses the system at these, uh, you know, periods of time in the day. So Signal couldn't get a whole lot of information but let's take let's take a, a different application right let's take facebook for instance now facebook on on these app privacy labels it's it's as long as my arm like they've got the cbs a, receipts yeah exactly yeah. they've got like seven bazillion things which is a real number now seven bazillion things that they track about you and use that to you know sell ads against um everything from financial history to who you're talking to to your location to everything about you um facebook is using now could that expand could they use it for more and more stuff and are they going to keep these uh these privacy labels up to date i i don't know I, basically the the thing that i want um i, I want you to understand is that these labels are an interesting data point, but that's it. You shouldn't look at this as the word of truth. You shouldn't look at it as, as the end all be all. And hey, if I use Signal, there's no way on earth that they could ever use my phone number for anything because the reality is they could if they really wanted to. Sure, there could be consequences, but frankly, this is a, a note that says, I promise. Right. And it's it's up to how much you trust that individual app developer with a note that says, I promise from open whisper systems slash signal slash Moxie Merlin spike. If he says, I promise. Yeah, I generally trust the guy. If Facebook says, I promise. Nah, I, I really don't. Well, if you go to the open whisper systems job post and you go to perks, they go, hey, look, we we're a nonprofit here. We don't make money. Uh, we, we can't give you a gym membership, but if you want us to do some pushups with you, we'll all do pushups. So they're clearly saying, look, you're, you're coming here to work because you fully believe in this privacy system, because if we sold this, we would be making a lot more money, uh, because obviously people want that. Uh, again, we talk about <clears throat> if it's, if, if you're running this and you're not paying for it, then you're the product. Again, people send all the stuff through Facebook, all through WhatsApp, huge files. They have to keep, I mean, when WhatsApp is down, the world goes crazy, even if it's down for a few minutes. So they need to have that reliability. All that costs money. And and if you're not paying for it, now I do remember WhatsApp used to be a dollar a year. If you don't remember that, WhatsApp used to be $1 a year. And the idea was to be an alternative to text message. Uh, and the problem is, is countries like Brazil and India were almost exclusively WhatsApp and, and basically WhatsApp was supremely powerful when the Brazilian judges shut them down. Uh, I think it was, I mean, it didn't last 24 hours before the country revolted, but anyway, so you see this and, and people get scared, but you have to ask yourself like with permissions, what are they trying to do? And yes, they have that information. But maybe they're trying to make things better. Maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe they are just as evil as we think they are. But that's on you. You have to make that decision yourself. And remember, it can, security, is, what is it? security is the enemy of convenience. You're, you want all the security, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you inconvenience, which, which comes, I, I guess, the next story is uh, uh, WhatsApp versus Signal. Uh, so... <clears throat> So the thing we said is, hey, look, if you're on WhatsApp and you have a Facebook account, okay, you have to make a decision. Um, you're already on Facebook. So WhatsApp is just, just Facebook is just linking the information together to see this profile on Facebook means this profile here. Now we did say, and we still hold to this, that's the, the encryption inside of WhatsApp is bulletproof. I mean, Facebook, the government, they can't get inside those conversations. But we've also discussed how metadata may not be, the metadata may sometimes be more important. Now you have to ask yourself, and I was talking to somebody about this. I moved my family from SMS. That was a massive undertaking. It took years and years and years and years. Now I got them on WhatsApp. I can't move them again. There's no way I'm going to be able to move them again. But here's the thing. We don't post anything in there. And my family's already on Facebook. They're already my friend. This is not some secret. So they see some family group. What, what is 
I mean, you know that it's going to be family things in there, pictures of the kids, everything else. But I do know they will never be able to see those pictures of the kids. But it's one of those things. If you have Facebook or you have Instagram and you're posting all this nonsense, you're posting that you're that you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Uh, talking about on WhatsApp is is not like this. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It's you're you're you can't be righteously indignant about that. So so the background is that uh, WhatsApp apparently uh, because WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, it uh, gave users an ultimatum. Uh, it basically said, hey. You can either share your WhatsApp data with Facebook, they're updating their privacy policy, or you don't use the platform anymore. And those are your two options. Um, now, uh, the, the founder of WhatsApp, when he sold to Facebook, said that this will never happen. This will never be a thing. We're never going to do this. Uh, and then when he left the company, right, all bets are off. When you sell the thing, you can't make promises against it anymore. Um, so yeah, if you continue to use WhatsApp, you are sharing data with Facebook about your usage of that application. Um, that said, is that really the end all be all? Like, is that the worst thing in the world? Not necessarily. So uh, just like you were saying, if you have a Facebook account, if you have an Instagram account, if you are active on those platforms, does using WhatsApp really share that much more data? I would argue it doesn't. If you have a Facebook account, uh, you are sharing way, 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 way more data than WhatsApp will ever give them. If you have the Facebook app installed with full permissions, you are sharing way, 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 way more data as the alarm on my phone goes off, way more data uh, than they could ever care about. Um, so, does WhatsApp get them anything else? No, nah, not really. Now, if you don't have a Facebook account, if you're like me, you don't have Facebook, you don't have Instagram, you don't use uh, really any of their properties whatsoever, does WhatsApp represent, you know, a pretty significant increase in the data that Facebook has on you? Uh, yeah, somewhat, right? Facebook is still tracking random users across the web. There are still such things as shadow profiles. Um, but uh, frankly, I would rather not share my data with Facebook. So I am going to start moving things to Signal. Um, like you said, it's not it's not easy. I do have a lot of contact on WhatsApp or contacts on WhatsApp. Um, but it's it's a decision you have to make for yourself, right? Are you throwing away all of your privacy 100% down the drain if you use WhatsApp tomorrow? No, I would argue no. Um, if you don't have any Facebook properties and you continue to use WhatsApp, are you adding to the pile of their data. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a decision you have to make for yourself. I still think WhatsApp is better than SMS. Um, it's, it's better than Telegram. But it's less good than Signal, which has uh, been our point basically forever. It was one of those, when we first started uh, the WhatsApp group, we said, we, we came up with different things that we needed. So we didn't want SMS. Basically, all the people in our group basically have jobs and we're all sitting at our desk all day. So we need a way that we can work and and go I, I don't want to say the word goof off because again, OPSEC, we don't want to tell our employees we're goofing off, but we want to share security information or ask questions or whatever it is. And I have a full size keyboard. I Tom and I have like the same clicky keyboard that's really good compared to compared to whatever uh, the iPhone is, which is not good, good keyboard. <clears throat> so we wanted something that was cross-platform on anything that we can share things easily with. And we went through it. Not everyone had Facebook. So while I really do like Facebook Messenger, not everyone had that. Uh, it was WhatsApp seemed to be that group. And then when Signal or when Open Whisper Systems, that's the company behind Signal, uh, integrated their encryption, it was almost a no-brainer. It was, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. This is not Telegram with proprietary crypto. Um, at the time, Signal didn't have group messages. They didn't have their desktop app. Everyone was a phone number and not... So on WhatsApp, you get the nickname that they put. So you can associate a name. So it's not just... It was all these little things. So we agreed with it. Now Signal started upping their game. And they made, now you can have groups, you can have admins, which, was a, which wasn't a thing before. The desktop app still runs on Electron, but it's still, it's not terrible. 
And there's a whole bunch of positive things there. So the question is, should we move? Should we not move? And this is the argument that we've been having. Like you said, I now live basically on WhatsApp and it's just another platform I'm going to have to download and get people to use. And by the way, Signal is not that easy to use. It's not hard to use, but if you don't do certain things correctly, and we've discussed this, people change their phone numbers and if they don't re-register or whatever it is, like they forget to install it, messages go into the ether. It doesn't say the person's not there because that's how Signal was done. WhatsApp will say, uh, I think they'll say, this number no longer exists or something like that. They'll, they'll tell you that something's wrong because they traded the conven- that little security over the convenience. But with all that said, it's one of those things that now we're, <clears throat> we're starting to look more at Signal. Now, while we were discussing this and the events yesterday uh, and these privacy and nutrition facts, all my friends are coming, I want to move to Signal. And I go, well, hold on a second. Before you move, why do you want to move? Because if you want to go back to OPSEC, if you do everything on Facebook, but only some stuff on Signal, people are going to wonder, what's that stuff? Like, what, what are you doing? What's that stuff before that? So same thing. You can't learn how to encrypt emails the night before. You can't learn how to delete cookies the night before. You got to learn. This is one of those things that you have to live. So if you're going to move, more power to you. I would love to have all my friends on Signal. I do know that it's hard. It's not going to be easy, especially with iMessage and everything else. But, but if you want that really bulletproof security at this point, Signal's the way to go. Is WhatsApp bad? No. I mean, are they going to share the data with Facebook? And can the law enforcement get it? Yes. But the chats are encrypted. I don't know what else to say. I think I think it's one of those. What's what with five minutes? What's the threat model? Who are you hiding from? Yeah. I mean. Who like honestly, who are you hiding from? And you have to everyone has to ask themselves who they're hiding from. Uh and and going to the nth degree to say I'm gonna do the most secure, you're not going to be happy with. So you have to reasonably say, This is my reasonable security level that I want to do. If you're gonna say I only contact me on signal, guess what? You're not gonna have that many friends. And and keep in mind that signal still runs on mobile platforms right this is this is a very very fancy tracking device that we carry around in our pockets right or wear on our wrists or uh, other things right like these these electronics are not completely holistically secure um so we we are trading a whole lot of convenience for security here uh just just for the fact of carrying a smartphone um are you going to convince me to drop my smartphone because it's not secure it's not the most secure option no, nah, it's not going to happen. Um, I really like that convenience. Um, I, the the question of, you know, do I go all in on Signal and drop everything else forever? It's a question of your threat model and Signal versus noise. Ha, you get it? Um, so the Signal versus noise argument is that if you're looking in a wide range of data from a person and you know that there's an outlier, right? Why is there an outlier there, right? So if you if you only use Signal uh, to communicate about secret things, that's fine. Just understand that the Signal is very present and there's very little noise. Now in WhatsApp, right, do I communicate secret things? Sometimes, not very often, but sometimes I'll you know send a password over WhatsApp or something, uh, or an SSH key, uh, but there's also a lot of noise right there's there's a lot of pictures of of american opossums that my wife is sending me because apparently that's the thing now people love those like bitey grabby little critters i don't see the appeal but that's just me right there's a whole lot of noise in my whatsapp usage uh and very little signal to key off of right there's a whole lot of benign just boring everyday communications uh mixed in with stuff that yeah i'm glad the encryption's there um but if if that doesn't play into your threat model, if you're not worried about the signal versus voice stuff and you want to send one signal message per year, you totally can. Just understand that when you take a look at graphs, when you take a look at usage trends, when you take a look at those things, it can be easy to pick stuff out if you are only doing things, uh, you know, nefarious or secret or hidden or private, right? You... Not everybody drives to work in a in a like Brinks armored van, right? 
typically when you see an armored van on the street, you know they're carrying something valuable or they're on their way to get something valuable because it's an armored van. Now, if everybody drove armored vans, A, that's terrible for gas mileage in the environment, but B, you wouldn't know if it's just somebody dropping their kids off at school or if it was a bank transporting millions of dollars, right? That's the signal versus noise conversation. Um, so, you know, should you use signal? Sure, if you want. Uh, should you push all your friends and family into signal? Uh, sure, if you want, but that's also really, really difficult. Um, I need to move like three people off of WhatsApp and into signal, and I'm actually dreading it. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't think, again, I don't think WhatsApp is bad. Signal is just better. It's one of those... I have on my phone all the different messenger apps that I that I reasonably use and people message me and I reply back to all of them. It's how much effort do I want to do? And and with family, it, it gets really hard. They'll listen to an extent. Your friends will listen to an extent. But for the most part, it's it's monumental. So you have to again, you have to really ask yourself if this is what you want. And we're out of time now, but I just wanted to say, this is literally the conversation we're having in the WhatsApp group. I mean, it's, do we want to move everybody? Because to get someone to start using Signal was, we did this in the beginning, it was really hard. And then, but everyone has WhatsApp. Everyone has WhatsApp. They saw, I mean, the link previews. I mean, we, we talk about, are the link previews secure? And is the hookup to the desktop? But we're not talking about, re, we're not talking about bad things in the WhatsApp group. We're talking how to help you. I mean, it's encrypted, but that's what it is. So again, it's now people are trying to move to it and we're having this real discussion about it. And what we did is we actually did set up a signal group and, and we're, we're, we're testing it out and it's going pretty well. I mean, there hasn't been too many things. A lot of, we're finding a lot of bugs, like how to, how to stop people from talking in the middle of the day, but we were able to mute conversations. That was good. We're able to pin conversations. We're able to share links. So signal is getting there. And I, I think soon we, we may be ready to say, Hey, everyone, let's move over there. If you want to come join us, join us. If not, I mean, and, we're a security group. So keep in it's mind free. It, it all comes down to your threat model so one yeah. of my most used messengers for the past few years has been discord so discord is not encrypted at all other than like https up to discord servers everything is logged and stored in plain text to everyone i am having clear text conversations all day long but you know what i do on discord i talk to my gaming friends we we post like high scores and we're looking forward to this game and oh look at this clip i got six kills in this match um right like does this stuff need to be encrypted i would argue not necessarily would it be cool if it was yeah totally um but do i care that it's not uh, frankly it doesn't really impact me all that much the things i discuss on discord just aren't that <laughs> they, they don't meet that bar where i really want privacy um or I really don't care about privacy there, right? And, and there's plenty of arguments that say that I should, and I get that, but most normal people aren't going to be receptive to those. So it's all about your threat model. Think about what you're protecting yourself and the people you converse with from, uh, and then make your decision from there because there's a bazillion options out there. Pick what and works. And by the way, iMessage is a very, very good acceptable use. Yeah. I mean, Apple controls the keys. However... What's it called? And remember, RCS now, uh, Google's implementation of RCS is allegedly encrypted. We're not 100% sure about that. So we are getting to that encrypted thing there. But again, you want bulletproof security? That's Signal. The rest of them, they all have their compromises and you have to make your decision. Anyway, we are way over time. So we are going to end and we will hopefully see you next week. See Bye, you, everybody. Everyone. Right, let me shut off Twitch.